tonight I want to talk about the cookbooks that I really reach for. I have lots of cookbooks here on this shelf and on the shelf beside me. And I, I like many of you can probably totally relate to, of all the cookbooks that I have, there are really just a handful that I keep reaching for the most. And some of them aren't brand new. They didn't, you know, just happen yesterday. And I have tons of, I mean, I have, well, not tons, but I have a lot of cookbooks that I probably only got one good recipe out of, and then they just sit on the shelf. I can't bring myself to get rid of the cookbooks because I admit I'm a bit of a recipe hoarder. When I try to, or a cookbook hoarder, when I try to go through the cookbook and I have the intention of pulling it off and getting rid of it once and for all, I give it that one last flip through and I'm like, oh yeah, I remember I wanted to make that. And you see another, oh, I remember I wanted to try that. And oh yeah, well, okay, I like the way the recipes read. All right, it doesn't, you know, I'm gonna keep it and I put it back on the shelf, never to look at it again. Y'all relate? I want to see some thumbs ups. Give me some love if you, you know what I'm saying. So, uh, we were talking in the thread just here in the group earlier this week, and someone asked uh, about cookbooks. Like, what were the cookbooks that I really reached for? So, I have just like I have shelf priority, and the this is the shelf that I reach for most, and uh, the cookbooks that kind of evolve not really, revol it's revolve, not evolve, but revolve up to this shelf. So sometimes I can, when I get into a mood or if the season changes, I'll go dig books from different shelves and then a book might end up here, you know, so this, sh this shelf, even in itself, doesn't stay the same all the time. But right now, I'm going to share with you what it looks like, okay? Number one book that I reach for, I'm just jumping right to number one, is Plant, per Plant Pure Nation, okay? And I'll tell you, I love this book so much that I forgot that I had, this is my signed copy from Kim Campbell when I met Kim Campbell in Midland, Texas last year. And then, before I met Kim, I had an old, my, uh, no, this is a newer copy of Plant Pure Nation, and I got tired of, like, dragging the book around, so I took it off the binder, I took it off and I, t I took out each page and then I hole punched it and then I stuck it in this in this binder so that I could just take out the recipes that I needed. But I was accessing the book so much that I was being, I didn't want to carry the book back and forth. And I didn't want to uh, get the, um, you know, the book too cruddy. So I ended up turning it into a binder, but then I forgot that I had it in a binder and I got out my book that Kim signed and I started ripping pages out of it because that's what I do. I get I get one recipe that I like and I keep making it over and over and I end up just tearing the page out and taking the page with me to the kitchen. So next is uh, Same Family. I've got the China Study Cookbook. Comes in from Leanne Campbell. That is Dr. Campbell's daughter. The tofu mayo that I make the most comes out of this book. And I've made the banana muffins out of here. And then after that, it's just inspiration. Like I don't, there's not any other recipes that I actually make all the time, but I flip through it to remind me how simple I can cook something and it come out. Okay, so uh, I have that. And then right next to it, I have the China Study All-Star Collector. Now, I get, this is another book that I don't actually cook from. This, I know y'all understand what I mean. I don't actually cook from it, but I will read it to get inspired. So, that's there's a difference there, right? Okay. Next book. <laughs> y'all seen this one before. <laughs> I actually read my own book. You know, these these recipes really are recipes that my family enjoys eating. I didn't just make this book just to make it. I mean, we really eat all these recipes. So I like to go through here like a menu planner and I flip through here and I say, well, what do I, what do I got on hand? What can I make? Because I know that my family loves everything that comes out of this book. When I want to grow myself and go beyond and not be simple, I mean, even though this is simple, I like Miyoko Shinner's Homemade Vegan Pantry. Before I was plant-based, I don't know if any of y'all know me from before then on my YouTube channel or on my on my blog, but um, 
before I was plant-based, Simple Daily Recipes, the YouTube channel, was all about finding fresh food. I'd go to farms and collect my own uh, vegetables and fruits. I'd pick my own food. And when I came home, I did a lot of scratch cooking. That was what the channel was really all about. So uh, this book nurtures that side of me that likes to do things from scratch. And uh, and Miyoko Shinner has such a, you know, she has such a, a professional or gourmet quality to her recipes that, you know, I can feel fancy when I make her stuff and I trust her recipes that she has never failed me. So... So far, everything I've come out of here make or that I've made out of here has been a success. Particularly, her biscuit recipe. So, uh, and she's got a recipe in here for caramel sauce that I would like to use um, in some desserts and over some pies. So, this is just one of those kind of like Bible books, you know, just something you, a reference book you hang on to. So that's one of my favorites. Okay, the next section we're going into is my exploratory books, okay? I'm not, I've only made a few recipes out of the collection itself. I'm exploring. I haven't flipped any switches. Y'all don't freak out. But, but the next section is raw. So I'm actually reading all of these books at different, I'm reading them all at the same time. So I have four, I actually have five raw books. One is called Practically Raw by Amber Shea Crawley. And it's practically raw because she's coming at the reader with a transition in mind that maybe you just want to eat fresher. You're not necessarily wanting to go raw. Or you're not ready to go raw, but you're, you're willing to make more fresh foods, you know, but then maybe you want to, you don't want to sprout your grains. Maybe you want to steam them or maybe you want to cook your rice and then you know, have rice and then add fresh veggies to it or something like that and get into dressings and wraps. So this is why it's called Practically Raw. It's just, she gives us options to steam and dehydrate and bake things, but try to make most of the meal raw. So this is, uh, this is interesting to me. You know, it's, it says flexible raw recipes anyone can make. Uh, so far, everything is doable. I have not seen weird ingredients not anything complicated. It is not, it is not oil free. So that's disappointing. But I'm also learning that raw food, with the exception of Tanny Raw, the YouTube channel, and Tanny Raw, the person, um, these raw, these raw cookbooks, all, they all have oil in them. They all call for oil. And it's like this, I think it has something to do with, you know, that satiety, you know, that feeling, um, that mouthfeel that we have, you know, so, um, a lot of oils there, but I'm, I, I'm just skipping over that part. You know, that's what we do, right? Cause there's, re there's plenty of plant-based whole food, plant-based recipe cookbooks out there that call for oil. And we all know to look past the oil and just go on and make something anyways. Right? So Nikki says, I just downloaded Tanny Raw's book. Oh, <gasps> which one? I have one of those too. I have the one with the soups and the dips. I don't know what it's called. I think it's her newest one. I do like Tanny Raw, I like watching her. She's very inspiring to me. She's a joy to watch. And I like that she is an oil-free, clean, uh, you know, raw food person. But she doesn't say raw food. She just talks about, you know, making good food. So, anyways, I have that one. And then the next one I'm studying is Annie, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, P-H-Y-O. I have no idea how to say that, but uh, hers is the essentials of raw foods. And I like this one because she does a lot of dehydrator recipes and she's, you know, coming at the angle of like living food. And I'm just learning, the, you know, I'm learning about processes here from her. So uh, I haven't made anything from her book. I'm just watching, you know, how things are put together. She, um, she's not too heavy with the oils. She, you know, she will call for oil, but, you know, like a tablespoon of something. She does a lot of nuts, lots of nuts, lots of almonds, sunflower seeds. Um, she really likes her almonds and her nuts and not too many cashews, but a lot of, a lot of almonds. I saw that. So if you love almonds, this would be a good book. But she seems very practical. I mean, not, 
there's just a couple of ingredients when she has like it's she has some Korean recipes that she's made raw she's got American recipes you know that kind of thing and um, so when you get into her Korean recipes then you know things like uh, kimchi kimchi sauce uh, she calls for things like that I don't know where to find kimchi sauce uh, but everything is like really you know She's very clear, so she's not scaring me away at all. Okay, the next ones, okay, I'm just going to put these two together. Mimi Kirk, Live Raw Around the World, and then just Mimi Kirk's Live Raw. They almost look identical, but this one, she actually goes around the world. She has, like, you know, all the cuisines that you would run into around the world. And then um, her Live Raw, the, I mean, they're almost the same book. This one's a little more, well, it's not around the world. You know, it's kind of more everyday. She has, uh, I, you can see I have these tabs. She gets me excited. She does, uh, she uses her dehydrator. And uh, this is where I got the cashew cheese. I learned how to make cashew cheese with the probiotics. She was the one that taught me how to do that. She has one here for pimento cheese and others. And there's like a sun-dried tomato. She's got stuff in here that I, I am interested in trying. You know, just to have more fresh food. I'm all over these. Okay, next, I put these together too. <gasps> Thug Kitchen. I have Thug Kitchen on my shelf. I like the party. I have the party grub and their first one. Or does it go like this? Sorry, I had those upside down. <laughs> I have the first one and party grub. I, uh, I love these books. They're hilarious. But they're also, they're, they are very, very inspiring. I like reading. Um, they inspire me to go a little bolder with my spices. It's not oil free, but I don't, you know, that's okay. There's a lot of Tex Mex going on in here, and my family loves Tex Mex. So I really enjoy digging into, um, into their recipes. And when they fry things in oil, I just bake it. You know, I do stuff like that. I have to just drop the oil and do a lot of baking. But very inspiring books. Very inspiring. Okay, and the rest of these are just like cushions. Like I have. Uh, Julie Hassan's vegan pizza always inspires me to, you know, make my homemade pizzas differently. So this is a uh, 50 cheesy, crispy, healthy recipes, vegan pizza. Uh, not a lot of pictures, but lots of uh, uh, sauce recipes, pesto, sun-dried tomato, basil and arugula pesto. She's got a smoky white cheese sauce here. So she kind of goes into the different um, different ways to make soy curls. She's got a garlic soy curls recipe here. Sweet and smoky soy curls. Oh, yeah, she's our gal. She knows about them soy curls. Anyway, so this one's inspiring as far as, like, you know, if you need to look up different, you know, you want to change the way you eat your pizza. I like this one. My books are all falling down. Okay, I don't, probably don't have to say much about this one because I think everybody has this one. Oh, She Glows. The Oh, She Glows cookbook. <gasps> oh, She Glows. This one inspires me. I have a couple of, I've made a couple of things out of this book, but that's it. That's all I've done. I've never, like, tried to go through this book and make what she makes. Um, I'm often just inspired to use certain ingredients together, and then I go on on my way. So that's... Fresh from the Vegan Slow Cooker by Robin Robertson. Y'all know me. I do not plan my meals out, you know, four and six hours ahead of time. So <clears throat> I admit that I don't dig it. You know, I don't dig into slow cooking very often. But um, when the moment hits me, I do like to uh, dive into this and see if I can pressure cook some of these slow cook recipes. Uh, so I've done that. I think there was a, like that, the spicy soy curls recipe that I have. That's my recipe. I came up with it, but it was an inspiration. She doesn't have soy curls in here, but her sauce blend inspired me. Um, I think I think it was her that inspired me on a sauce blend that I could put on soy curls that I could pressure cook. So stuff like that, you know, that's, I'll, that, this is a good book like that to think, how could I change up a, a slow cooked recipe to a, a pressure cook? So, there we go. Megan says, is Oh She Glows oil free? No, she is not. 
Okay, and then the other two are more like reference books. I have my Excalibur Dehydrator reference book, and uh, I have my Nutribullet recipe book that they gave me, and there's a few things in here that I keep threatening to try, and I just haven't gotten to them yet. Those are my top shelf books. Just real quick, I'll give you a quick glance of what I never make. This, this shelf is much quicker. Okay, wait, wait, wait. All right, this, this shelf, this is second shelf, and this second shelf is comprised of like my holiday books. So this is another level of inspiration, but one that I'm just not dipping into right now. So for the holidays, I like Jazzy Vegetarian's Classics. Here's all my happy herbivore. She's always inspiring. Um, I have Cal Colleen Patrick Goudreau. I, I like her vegan baking. Uh, Color Me Vegan is fun. Uh, that's a fun one to look at. I have another vegan slow cooker book here that I got from the Half Price Bookstore that inspires me. So uh, I'm just not in the mood for these right now. That's why they're down here. But they, they kind of go back and forth from top shelf to, to this shelf. And then here on the bottom are like ones that I never use. Um, st like, you know, the, here's my first Betty Crocker cookbook. Now, y'all, I know y'all understand, I'm never getting rid of this book. Even though, you know, it's got meat in it and all that stuff and I don't cook this way anymore, this is still my first cookbook. I can't get rid of it. Y'all understand, right? Thumbs up. So, uh, I have stuff like, uh, now, my Artisan Bread and Five Minutes a Day books, these are references as well. I do reference these. I take that back. Th these are reference. I've got a pumpkin book, a Glorious Greens, a tofu book. There's... Miyoko's vegan cheese. Um, here's one that I, I dip into when I'm feeling like, you know, grilling in the summertime. This is where I get all my barbecue sauce recipes and marinades. Yes, it's all for meat, but all this stuff I can put on soy curls, tempeh, whatever. Okay, and then last ones. Now, this is the next set that I actually use, but they're put together because they have scientific nutrition tied to them. So, so I, I do dip into, these are books I use, I really do reach for, Healthy Eating for Life for Children and for Women, put out by Physicians Committee of Nutritional, um, I'm sorry, for, for Physicians Committee of Responsible Medicine, okay? Uh, I look into those all the time. They're not oil-free. This is before Dr. Barnard and PCRM were oil-free, but, uh, the, but they're still great recipes. I've got uh, Dr. Barnard's Power Foods for the Brain, his uh, Breaking the Food Seduction. These have all these have great recipes. Well, except for Whole and China Study. Um, then there's Starch Solution. I reach for that. Engine Two by Beef with Meat and uh, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease and Dr. Barnard's uh, Reversing Diabetes Program. Uh, those have recipes in them that I like. But this is my you know nutritional plant-based nutrition shelf, so I try to keep all those together. So, there we go. And I've read all these. I've read them all. It's all in my head. I can't, you know, like, call everything off the top of my head, but it's all there. Okay, that's, that's most of my cookbooks. There's like, you know, 50 more, but I think that's enough. I think I've covered enough about cookbooks. All right, y'all have a good night, and I will talk with y'all later. Bye.